We've introduced a new tool to help you control when patients are able to submit requests. This tool can be used by dashboard administrators to restrict patients' forms when the practice is either closed or experiencing increased demand. You're able to customise a schedule for these controls to help you take control of patient requests. To access these controls, you need to add some additional text to the end of your website address, similar to when you need to access your dashboard, but this time you need to type forward slash patient dash form dash control to the end of your site address. Just make sure you're doing this from the home screen so you haven't got any additional address information after the .co.uk. You'll be taken to a login screen and this is where a dashboard administrator will be able to use their dashboard login to access these controls. When you're logged in, you can see some different options down the left of the page. The first one is form schedule and this is the page that will be displayed when you log in. The form schedule is used to set up a schedule to restrict access to forms by disabling all or some of the forms on your website. You can set up multiple schedules to control access to your forms for different situations and these can be changed and edited at any time to coincide with the demand on the practice. If you're a multi-site administrator you will see a page that looks similar to this. You'll be able to see all of the schedules for the sites that you have access to. There will be separate schedules for each of your practices which you can edit but you cannot apply one schedule to all of these sites. Here you can see information of existing schedules. You can see the type of notice that has been set up here. The number of forms we've restricted with this notice is here. And the schedule type we have selected for the restrictions will show here. If you decide to include a special event with this schedule, which are specific days and times that you would like the restriction to come into effect, these will show here. Then we have the edit and delete buttons where you can make changes to an existing schedule or delete it. Before you set up a schedule, you need to create a notice that will be displayed to the patient when you have chosen to limit your form availability. This is what you'll use the notices page for. Here you can set up different notices to display to patients when you're disabling forms. For example, if you're planning to restrict forms when the practice is closed, or you might also choose to set up a notice for things like training or if the practice has had to close unexpectedly. Notices allows you to add a customised message along with some alternative options to display to the patient when you've chosen to restrict your form access. You can see here I have some notices set up already and I'll show you how to add a new notice in just a minute. Before we do that I just want to point out there are some statistic pages here which I'll go through later on in the video. To set up a schedule the first thing you need to do is to create the notice that you want to display. To do this you click on the add button and this will take you into a page to start creating the content. Notice name is what you want to call your notice and this will only be displayed internally. This is how you'll be able to identify what the notice is. So let's say I'm setting up a notice when the practice is closed, so we'll call it closed. Notice heading is the heading that will appear at the top of the message the patient will see. So I'm just going to type the practice is currently closed. Then we have notice content which is where I'll type the content of the message that the patient will see, which could look something like this. We've also got some formatting options here so we can format our text, we can make some text bold if we want to or even add a link. We've set our message and now we have some options which we can add to the notice. The patient options will display under your notice and are there to help direct the patient to alternative help or information. For example, I have mentioned the treatment room and wellbeing centre in the notice so I'll add these as options. I select the plus icon to add an option and I can choose to include a page from our practice website, an external web address, telephone number or an email address. In this case I want to direct the patient to a page from our practice website. When I select the link I get a drop down which will give me all of the rooms, triages, forms and pages on the website. You can also search for a page here. I'm going to select the treatment room first and you can see this pre-populates the link address for me. So now when the patient clicks on this, it will direct the patient straight to the treatment room. 
I can then choose to edit the text that will display to the patient for this option if I wanted to. I'll do the same for the wellbeing room. And I've also written NHS 111 in our notice, so we can add this as a web address. Because this is an external web address, we need to retrieve the address information from the website by going to the website and copying the site address. And then pasting the address into the link field. The text I will use to display this is, I will visit NHS 111 online. So then when the patient selects that option, they'll be taken directly to the NHS 111 website. If your practice uses products such as Libby, you may want to add these options too. Finally, I can choose to allow the patients to continue with their online request. If I select yes here, it will allow the patient to bypass this information and continue to submit their request. You can then customise what you want the text to display for this option. In this example, I'm going to choose not to allow the patient to continue with their request. I want to stop patients submitting forms entirely when the practice is closed. I've created my notice, now I just need to select save. And if I go back to the Notices tab, I can see the details of the notice I've just set up. And I can either go back in and edit this notice if I wanted to, or I can choose to delete it if I no longer needed it. Now I've set up a notice, I can create a schedule. So we can see I already have one set up here, which I'll just show you. And there's one thing I just want to point out here that you'll see on existing schedules that are set up is at the top we have schedule history and this will give you an audit trail of any previous schedules that have been set up or changed. I'm going to go back now and show you how to add a new notice. So from form schedule I just need to select add. Now here is where we can set up when we want our notice to be shown to patients and which forms we want this to be active on. To start setting up my schedule, I need to select which one of the notices I want to go onto our site. So when we select the drop down, you'll see the names of any notices that you have set up in here. This is why it's quite important when you're creating a notice that you name it something that is easily recognisable and that you're not duplicating any notice names. When I select the notice I want, I can then choose what schedule I want to set. There are two types of schedules you can set up, ongoing schedules which can be used for regular recurring form restrictions or we have special events which can be used for seasonal closures or one-off restrictions. You can choose to set up both within one schedule if you're happy for the same notice to be displayed for both scenarios. For ongoing schedules we have again some different options. None will essentially turn off the schedule. If you perhaps have one in place currently and you want to turn it off, you can select none and then save and it will turn the schedule off. Weekends will come into effect on closing of the practice on a Friday and will automatically enable the forms again when the practice opens on the Monday. You can see if you select this option, you can also choose to set this to come into effect just before the practice closes for the weekend. You can set the schedule to weekends and evenings, which means your notice will display during out of hours. You're given the option again to set this before the practice closes. Then you have custom hours where you can set a schedule to come into effect on a chosen day and time, and for the schedule to turn off again at a certain day and time. You're also given the option here to add additional custom hours if you wish. And definitely, we'll schedule the notice to display on the selected forms all the time. For example, you could choose to have this option if there was an emergency and the practice needed to close. I want my forms to be disabled on weekends and evenings, so this is the option that I'm going to choose. And what I could also do is add a special event to this schedule, for example, Christmas closed hours if I wanted to. 
If you have a special event set up as well as a regular event, the special event schedule will always supersede the scheduled event. Then I have the option to select specific forms I want to disable or I can select to disable all of them by using the toggle button here. You may choose to switch off specific forms but still allow patients to submit administration requests or forms which are less urgent and can wait for a reply. It's worth carefully considering if patients have been asked to complete reviews or assessments online such as asthma review or contraceptive pill review. As many patients will choose to complete these forms in the evenings or on weekends, you may not want to include these in the schedule if this is the case. After you've made your selection, just press save and your schedule is set up. Let's have a look at what this will look like for the patient. So you can see here we've got our notice heading, we've got the content of our message and then we've also got our options here that we've set up. So if we click on I will call or visit NHS 111 you can see we're taken off to the NHS 111 website. So let's just have a quick look at another example where we want to set a notice to encourage the patient to seek an alternative method. But we're still going to allow them to submit their request. So I've added all of the information to the notice already. I've called it closed but allowing forms because I already have a closed option and I want to be able to differentiate between the two when I set the schedule. The heading is the same. I've changed the content of the notice slightly just to tell the patient if their request is not urgent and they're happy to wait for a response they can continue. And in the response options where we're asked if we want to allow the patient to continue I'm going to select yes. I'm happy with the default title for this one so I'm going to go ahead and save it and just to show you what this will look like for the patient they're able to select I'm happy to continue with my online request and then they're taken into the form you could also use this as a way of informing patients when you're experiencing increased demand and therefore would encourage them to seek alternative help. So now we know how to set up a schedule, the only thing left to cover is the statistics. Here you have some useful statistics which are broken down into three parts. The Access Overview tab gives you an overview of the amount of clicks overall that have been recorded when a schedule was in place. And this is broken down into the last 24 hours, 7 days, 30 days and 12 months. And when you hover over these you can see the amount of clicks. Form activity shows a breakdown of the forms a patient has selected when there was a schedule in place. And when you hover over this information it tells you how many clicks that form has received. Then we have our patient option statistics which shows you the options that patients went on to select when the notice was in place. We hope you find the form controls a helpful addition to your practice. Thank you for watching.